up with you having to get your phone or whatever. Psalms 34 and 8, just one passage of scripture here. When it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. And again, my message today is, is green eggs and ham. Of course, the old Dr. Seuss, uh, Dr. Seuss book. And what the, the story, the back story of it is, is that Dr. Seuss had wrote the cat in the hat and he'd used like 260 some words and his publisher made a bet with him that he couldn't write a book uh, with using only 50 words. I mean, using 50 distinct words. And he wrote the book using exactly... 50 words, and since he since they published it, I think it is so, somewhere around 8 million copies. It's a very simple little book, but, it, but when you read it, and let me read it to you, it takes, it takes a few minutes to read. I, I timed it this morning, so I didn't want to take too much time, and when I looked down at my phone, it was 3.16. It took 3 minutes and 16 seconds, and I thought, man, if you can get a, if there was any number there that I could have used, John 3.16, that would have been great. So, but yeah. It's, it goes like this, green eggs and ham. If nothing else, you'll get, a, you'll get a, a story told out of it in here. It says, I am Sam. Sam, I am. That Sam, I am. That Sam, I am. I do not like that Sam, I am. Would you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. Would you, could you in a car? Eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, could not in a tree. Not in a car, you let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them uh, in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. A train, a train, a train. Could you, would you on a train? Not in a train, not in a tree, not in a car. Sam, let me be. I would not, could not in a box. I would not, could not with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Say in the dark, here in the dark. Would you, could you in the dark? I would not, could not in the dark. Well, would you or could you in the rain? I would not, could not in the rain, not in the dark, not on a train, not in a car, not in a tree. I do not like them, Sam, you see. Not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. You do not like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you, could you with a goat? <laughs> I would not, could not with a goat. Would you, could you on a boat? I could not, would not on a boat. I will not, will not with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain, not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I will not like them. Do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. You do not like them, so you say, try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may. I say, Sam, if you will let me be, I will try them, you will see. And it says, and he tries them. Say, I like green eggs and ham. I do. I like them, Sam, I am. And I would eat them in a boat, and I'd eat them with a goat. I'd eat them in the rain, I, in the dark, and on a train, in a car, in a tree. They are so good, so good. You see, so I will eat them in a box. I will eat them with a fox. I will eat them in a house. I will eat them with a mouse. And I will eat them here or there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you. Sam, I am. And that, I, I, again, I want to preach this just, just for a few minutes. 
When he talks about, uh, when it's just this simply green eggs and ham. And, and the story begins here. You see the dialogue between Sam and an unnamed creature. We never know, we never know the one that's saying he don't like them. We don't know what his name is. All we know is he is saying that he does not like them. He, he is saying he, the one is trying to give him something good and he will not accept it. Every one of us can identify with that creature because that's what we are. We are created beings. We was created in the image of God. And every one of us at one point or another has probably rejected what was good. We said we don't like it. I'll never go there. I'll never go to that church. I'll never be that. I told my wife, I said, I will never go to a Pentecostal church. I will never go to Lick Fork. And I always say, if you want to hear God laugh, Tell him your plans because it ain't about what you say you will do, but once you've tasted a him, you will find out how good he really is. When it starts this, it starts with this story. He said, I am Sam, Sam I am. And that's interesting because in those first three words, there is two names of God that are used. The I am, of course, and Sam, which literally means Samuel, means the name of God. Whether that's coincidence or not, I don't know. But I do know two names of God is used there. And one meaning the name of God. And the other one is the one that was used in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 13 when it says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I go on and come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and you shall say, or they shall say, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Moses said, I don't know how to talk. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I've been a fugitive for 40 years. I'm 80 years old. I'm on the backside of a Midian desert. I don't even, the sheep that I'm watching are not even my own sheep. They're my father-in-law's. Everything about him, he thinks that he cannot do it. See, that's how a lot of us feel sometimes. We feel like, well, I can't evangelize. I can't witness. I can't sing. I can't testify. Because we think we got to do it ourselves. If, you, if we had to depend on ourselves to do that, I promise you, I would never walk up on this stage here. I have to, I have to believe that He's going to be with me, that, that all I can be is a mouthpiece, that He will be the one that does the work. And, and Moses is saying, but who, is, who am I even going to say sent me? And God says unto him, He said unto Moses, I am that I am. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. But he tells him, he says, I am Sam, Sam I am. But the creature turns around and you know what he says? He says, that Sam I am. That Sam I am, I do not like that Sam I am. You know there are a lot of people out there, they hate you just because, just because you're a child of God. The Bible says they're going to hate you, not because they hate you, but they hated me first. He said, how much more will they hate the servants of God? There is a lot of people that does not want to hear the word of God. They don't want to hear anything about God. And that creature says, and that Sam I am, that Sam I am, I cannot stand him. He says, I do not like that Sam I am. And in the little book of green eggs and ham, he clenches that fist against the very one that's trying to help him. And the Bible tells us that they are haters of God. It says in, in Romans chapter 1, it says, Because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the image of God into an image made like into corruptible beasts. And one of the attributes of a person that is given over to a reprobate mind along in that list is haters of God. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 9 and 17, for they are all haters of God and evildoers and foolish words come from every mouth. Four times in the story, green eggs and ham, he clenches his fist as as Sam, or as, the, as Sam I am tries to give him something good. Four times he or he offers it over and over, and four times he gets so angry he balls his fist up. Why? Because there is no desire there. In his mind, he thought, I don't want that. They are people, I'll guarantee you, they are people sitting under the sound of my voice right now. They say, I didn't come to hear that. I come to hear some singing. I came to go to the Sargon Festival. I wish they'd blast this so loud. You couldn't even hear somebody talk down under the tent. What we need is God. What West Liberty needs is God. What our schools need is God. What our churches need is God. What this government needs is God. The very thing that has the answer 
of the very thing that is good. He said, taste of him and see if it's not good. But everywhere you go, people are rejecting God because they do not want to retain God in their knowledge. The Bible said God will give them over to a reprobate mind. They'll believe a lie that they might be damned. There are people that believe a line that they will go all the way to hell. They have no desire. Sam and I am comes by and offers it to him, but there is absolutely no desire on the other end. You can say, well, I've told my family about them. I've invited them to church. I've, I've tried. I've begged and pleaded with them. Well, just keep on. You realize in the story, he didn't take no for an answer. You know why he didn't take no, uh, no for an answer? It's because he knew it was so good that if all he had to do was taste of it, and there was no way he would reject it once he tasted of it. I can't save you. I can't fill you with the Holy Ghost. I can't do any of that. But I tell you what I can do. I can tell you about a man that is good. I can tell you about somebody that said in him was life and the life was a lot of men and the light shined in the darkness and the darkness could not overtake it. The darkness comprehended it not. I can tell you about one who has the very meaning of life. At 27 year old, I walked into a church. I didn't know God. I didn't know anything about God. I walked in and I was under conviction so that I couldn't even mow the yard for crime. But, but still, I, I was, a, I'd rejected God all my life. All it took was one moment as they began to sing, let the worshipers arise. That first taste. Have you ever tasted something and you're sure you don't like it? I'm one of them people that if I don't think I like it, I won't, I won't eat it. I mean, it just, it's got to look right before I'll even eat it. It's got to smell right. It's got to go through all the checklists. That's why I don't eat a lot of things. I eat a lot, but there's not a lot of things. But have you ever had things that you just know that you wouldn't like? And before you even swallow that first bite, you think, man, I had that pig grown. Well, tell you, that's a lot, what a lot of people is. You know, whenever I walked into church... I thought if I go to church over there, it'll, I mean, if I finally, if I ever did get saved, it'll be a miserable life. At least maybe I won't have to go to hell. But you know that night when they began to sing, let the worshipers arise. And I stood up in that church service standing over there and looked forward. I said, God, I don't even know who you are. But whoever you are, you are worthy to be worshipped. And I raised my hand. I took my first bite. The moment I felt something start about the soles of my feet running up my legs, touch my heart, I was sold. For the rest of my life, I, I'm going to love green eggs and ham. For the rest of my life, I'm going to love what I tasted that first time. It was an addiction to God that came the first time I ever tasted of this the first time I walked out of the church service and I didn't have to worry about whether or not if I didn't wake up in the morning I wasn't worried about it if I die I die to the Lord if I live I live to the Lord whether I live or die I live or die unto the Lord that is a good feeling to have but there are a lot of people have they have no desire the Bible tells us this in Isaiah 53 it said who hath believed their report whom the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we give, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his straps we are healed. Sam comes by and says, do you like green eggs and ham? He don't even, not only does he not like green eggs and ham, he don't even like Sam and I am. Not only does he not like the message, he don't even like the messenger. He don't even like you. There are a lot of people... They already got in their mind. They hate church. They hate God. They hate everything about it. And they've never actually tasted of it to see how good it is. He said, would you like green eggs and ham? He sat there with his fist clenched. I said, I don't even like that guy. My uncle would say he hated his guts and liver and small intestine and everything else. And then he walks by and says, would you like some green eggs and ham? And he thought, I wish you'd get out of my face. I don't want green eggs and ham. But the very one that hated him, he still offered it to him. You know, that's how it is. Man was a hater of God, but yet the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. 
Not that he loved the church, and he does love the church, but he loved the world enough. The world that lived in pure rejection. The Bible said every thought, uh, every imagination of their heart was only evil continually in the days of Noah. And yet God loved them enough to send his son down here to die on the cross. And he asked a question, would you like green eggs and ham? Sam I am offers the creature something good. The Bible says in Romans 5 and 6, for when uh, we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for God commended His love toward us, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You may sit here today and say, well, I don't know God, but I, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough to even go in that church, I'm not worthy enough to even bow my knees. Let me tell you, that's who God died for. God died for the drug addict. God died for the prostitute. God sent His Son down here. God the Son died on a cross that, that you can have life. And the Bible says have it more abundantly. A lot of people put emphasis on the abundant life. But He said before you can have abundant life, you got to have life first. And we were dead in trespasses and sins. But He loved you enough to send His Son down here to die on the cross that you could go free. He said, would you like them? This is what he says. I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. I counted it up, and I quickly counted, so I may have missed one. But I counted today 11 times that the creature rejects what's good. 11 times the creature, how they are, they're convinced that they, that they don't like this, but they've never actually tasted of it. But there is a persistence of Sam, I am, and I think that's where a lot of us as Christians, we fall short. People tell us no and we feel rejected. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the message. They're rejecting God. It's your duty to prove to them. The Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. You know why? I mean, God began to deal with me. But you know one of the best testimonies? You know what the best thing to make me taste the Pentecostal, Lake Fork Pentecostal Church. You know what it was? It wasn't the preaching and the preaching was good. It was the lives that I saw, the life of Christ lived out inside of a human vessel. When I saw people like my mother and father-in-law, when I saw people like Bernal, I saw people like, like Ishmael Patrick, I saw those strong men. And I thought, man, if they're tasting of that and it blesses them like that, I want what they've got. Before I ever came in and heard the doctrine, I first had to look and say, whatever they have, I want some of that. <clears throat> I've always told about Pam Green. Pam Green loved me enough that when I was a sinner, she would come out and cry over me, beg me to go to church. And I thought, man, whatever she's got, if I ever get saved, I want, I want what she's got. But ever, he tells him, he, he will not take no for an answer. You may have invited your family, you may have told them time after time, begged them to go, and you may, you may feel like giving up. You know what you need to do? You need to offer it to them again. He said, would you eat them in a house? Would you eat them with a mouse? Would you eat them in a box? With a fox and a car and a tree? He is saying, all right, I'm going to meet you on your terms. If you don't want to eat it in a house, how about, how about in a box? How about in a car? How about let's get on your level here. Where would you try this at? All I've got to do is get you to try it. All I've got to do is get you to taste of it. Once you, once, I, once you taste of this, I believe you'll accept it. Once you taste of Him, taste of that heavenly gift, I believe you'll accept what He has to offer you. But the Bible says in Matthew 11 and 16, Jesus said, But whereunto shall I like in this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace calling to their fellows, saying, We've piped to you and you've not danced, and we've mourned and you've not lamented. Jesus said, For John came neither eating and drinking, and you said he has a devil, so you hated him. But Jesus said, I came eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a glutton and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified for children. Say, so I offered it to you. It's like children in the marketplace. I thought about it like this. Would you, could you, in a Pentecostal church? You may say, I don't want anything to do with that. Okay, what about a Baptist church? What about on Facebook? If you won't taste of it in our churches, why don't you at least get on Facebook 
and watch and watch the messages. Why don't you get on YouTube? Wherever you can get a hold of this, you may not want to do that out in front of everybody. All I'm asking you to do, I'm asking you one thing. Will you at least taste of him and see if he's not good? I'm not talking about taste of church people. Because those church people that are goats, you may have a bad taste in your mouth because you didn't taste Christ. You tasted a goat or you tasted a fox or you tasted a tear or you tasted a wolf in sheep's clothing. I'm asking you not to taste of somebody, but taste of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all it takes, man. Just taste of him. He said, would you, in a, on a train in the dark, in the rain, do you, he said, are you sure you don't like green eggs and ham? Could you, would you, with a goat? <laughs> I can tell you, I've eaten a lot of it with goats. <laughs> Anybody that's a Christian, you're going to eat some of this with a goat. Say, I don't want to go over at the hypocrites. Well, they, there are going to be some there. There are going to be some anywhere. There are probably some sitting here under the sound of my voice right now. Taste of him and say, I'm not asking you to, I'm not asking you what everybody else is doing. I'm asking you, have you ever really tasted of Jesus Christ? Do you know what it's like to, for your sins to be washed away? Jesus told Nicodemus, a man must be born again. It's not a religious system. It's not filling out a, a membership of the church. It's not fulfilling a moral obligation on a Sunday morning. I'm asking you, have you ever been born again? That is the most important thing. That is all that really matters when time is. That is all that's going to matter is have you ever been born again? Is your name written down in the book? Have you ever tasted of Jesus Christ? Amen. Paul said, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. A dispensation, or meaning a stewardship of the gospel, has been committed unto me. He said, I am made servant to all that I might gain the more. To the weak I became weak that I, may, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Paul was saying, I will go where you're at. When it came to the Jews, he met them in the law. When it came to the Greeks, he met them in intellect. When, he, when it came down to it, he would go up to the Areopagus on Mars Hill and he would debate them through their intellect. To the Romans, he would talk about strength. What was he doing? He was, he was trying to get anywhere that he went. He was trying to get somebody to taste of this. That's what I try to do. Everywhere we go, we should be trying that. I should be begging. I should be preaching to the ones sitting up here. Or take this thing out there. Walk through that tent and say, have you ever tasted a hymn? You all, people go on and on about sargon. I'm talking about something that's better than any sargon. Something better than anything you've ever tasted in your life. We should be out. The Bible says go into the highways and hedges and compel him that his house may be filled. Please taste of him and see if he's not good. He asked the question and he said, are you sure you wouldn't with a goat? Are you sure you wouldn't? In the, and it says, the story says that his fists are clenched. He said, I could not, I would not on a boat. I will not with a goat. I won't eat it in the rain, in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them with a fox. I don't. I won't eat them in a house. I won't eat them with a mouse. I won't eat them here or there. I won't eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. He said, I don't like them, Sam. I am. He says something here that stuck with me. He said, I could not do it. There's people feel like that. Well, I could never do that. I could never go to that church. What I've done to my past is so bad that if I went in, I used to say this ignorance too. I used to say, man, if I ever went in and said, I would say the, the church would fall in. I'm telling you, the church is still standing. But people say, well, I couldn't do that. Yeah, you can do it. You're a product of your will. You do a lot of things that you didn't think you could do. But if you have a desire, if you have a hunger for this, if you're hungry for something, there was a woman at the well of sight car. One time she came to draw water, but Jesus said, I've got some water to give you. That is a water, it's a well of everlasting water springing up into eternal life. If you're thirsty, I'll give you the drink. Amen. He said, I could not. 
But Sam kept insisting, you got to try this. You got to try this. People say, man, you're all a bunch of fanatics. That's exactly right. You ever heard that? I heard somebody say before, somebody started coming to Lake Fork Church, and they said that you all, they said, you all got brainwashed. And I thought, well, great. I needed a brainwashing. When I walked in 14 years ago, I needed a brainwashing. I needed something to happen. I need this old, this old carnal mind to be taken out. But Sam kept insisting. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 13, for if we have lost our minds, this is the new American standard, for if we have lost our minds, it is for God. If we are of a sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ constrains us, or the love of Christ constrains or controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that those who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one by the flesh. Even though we once known Christ by the flesh, yet now we know Him in this way no longer. What He was saying, we once looked through carnal eyes. That's how I used to be. You used to look through carnal eyes. I came up here to this Sargon Festival completely in the flesh. Come up here. I, I wouldn't have come to a church service. I would have avoided that. I would have walked a, a block away just to not have been around anything of church. There's a lot of people that's, listen, there are a lot of people that's walked through that tent right now. They're as carnal as they could be. There's a lot of people that have sat right here in this parking lot. They've listened to every, every song. They've listened to rock. They've listened to country. They've listened to everything else except the gospel. The very thing that could give them life. They've turned it away because, why? Because they're looking at it through carnal eyes. I'm here to tell you that if you would just simply place to him, and see whether he is good or not. Amen. I guarantee you that they were singers that come. I don't know anything about it. I ain't been up here till this morning. But I'll guarantee you they was people singing. They was people running out telling them, say, oh, you got to come and hear this one or that one. But you know what? I mean, if it's, if it's worldly stuff, then that's worldly stuff. That which is flesh is flesh, and it'll burn up the judgment seat. But what about the things that are eternal? See, a, a child of God should, they should be bold toward this. They should walk through, we should walk through that tent down there and tell everybody about Jesus Christ. Why? Because you tasted of Him one time. Do you remember the first time you ever tasted of this? The first time your sins were washed away? Can you remember what it was like when there was no more, when there was no, none of that baggage? It felt like a thousand pound weight had been lifted off of you. You chased after things. That's what I did. I chased after everything. I had a barn full of hobbies. What was I looking for? I was looking for green eggs and ham, but I was looking in the wrong spot. And one day Jesus came by. Sam I am came walking walking by and said, I've got something there, but I rejected him and I rejected him. I'm thankful that about 14 years ago, as Brother Johnny began to preach that message about Elijah and Elisha, I'm thankful for the first time I ever stepped out and said, let me have a taste of that. At least let me try. I'm looking for something. There was an emptiness in me from the time I was 10 years old. There was an emptiness in me until I was 27 years old that could not be filled by this world, it could not be filled by anything this world had to offer. He said, you do not like them, so you say, try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may, I say. And you know what he says, best thing he ever, best, best words he ever said. He said, Sam, if you'll let me be, I will try them. You will see. That, I remember Johnny and Vicky would invite me to church. Johnny would get me two or three weeks ahead of time. He'd say, uh, will you go to church, you know, three weeks from now on a Sunday? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll go with you. But yeah, I dreaded that for three weeks. I'm telling you, I dreaded it for three weeks. But I told him I would, and I'm, and, and so, and because I tasted a little of this honey. Hebrews 6 and 4 talks about those who are once enlightened taste of the heavenly gift. And it says, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. It said they tasted of the heavenly gift. 
They tasted of the Holy Ghost. They tasted of the Word of God. And they tasted of the power. What I'm asking you to do is take a bite of it and tell me what you think about it. And whenever that happens, it, you will watch people's eyes. You will watch a light. I'm talking about, I had physically saw that. I guess it was spiritually, but I could see this on people. I had watched people walk in, their eyes as black as midnight. Their eyes as, as, as dark as, as they could be. And whenever they, whenever they tasted this for the first time, the first time that you saw this happen before, somebody walk up, they got a whole pile of sins. They, they go to an altar and they get down and I mean they pray. I'm not talking about repeat after me some little deal to say this. I'm talking about somebody comes up and they take a bite of this and they get back up and it's like, it's like there is a glow around them. Man can't do that. Drugs can't do that. Nothing can do that. This world don't have anything that will do that to you. Only Jesus Christ, He is the source of life. He's the one that can do that. But their eyes are enlightened. And this is what the Bible says. It says that the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may, convert, may, may give uh, unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. He says that. He says, say, I do like green eggs and ham. And when He says that, this is what He comes out of His mouth. He said, I do. I like them, Sam I am. And I would eat them in a boat. I would eat them with a goat. I'll eat them in the rain. I'll eat them in the dark and on a train. I'll eat them in a car. I'll eat them in a tree. They are so good, so good, you see. I will eat them in a box. I will eat them with a fox. I will eat them with a mouse. I will eat them in a house. I'll eat them here. I'll eat them there. I'll eat them at Sarkin Festival. I'll eat them at, at church. I'll eat them in the prayer closet. I'll eat them in a vehicle going down the road. I'll eat them with a whole pile of goats. I'll, I'll eat this anywhere. Anywhere that I can get a bite of this. That's what we need. But he says, I'll eat them here. I'll eat them anywhere. He said, say, I will eat them anywhere. I do like green eggs and ham. But he says something at the end of that that I love. He says, thank you, thank you, Sam, I am. Thank you, thank you. You may be rejected while they come to get a song tonight. But you may, some of you in here, you may have witnessed to your family for a long time. They've told you, I won't go there. I won't go here. I won't listen to you. I don't want that. I won't eat them with a bunch of hypocrites. I won't eat them there. They make every excuse. They find every fault they can. And you may feel like giving up. But you know what old Sam I am done? He just kept offering it to him. And finally, after a while, he says, you know what? If you'll shut up, if you'll leave me alone, I'll try them. All it took was one bite. That's all it took for that creature to taste that and to realize that was what he was looking for. But he says that at the end. He said, thank you, thank you. I can tell you right now, my father-in-law invited me to church a lot of times. I didn't want to go, but I humored him. After a while, I finally tasted of it. But I can stand here right now, 14 years ago or 14 years later, and say, Brother Johnny Dagman, thank you for letting me taste of this. Thank you for giving me a bite of this. Thank you for preaching the word to me. I can tell our singers thank you for singing under the anointing. Thank you for singing that song that day. Let the worshipers arise. Thank you everybody that has aided and get me to where I don't have to go to hell. Thank you. He said thank you, thank you, Sam I am. There'll be people right now when you get to heaven there'll be people that will thank you for the witness that you give. Your children when they get saved, I said when they get saved. Not if they get saved. I was so straight up a child. Well, you'd have it go when it's old. It won't depart from it. There'll be people that'll thank you. I can tell you I can thank Lake Fork Church for standing for 109 years, standing on the gospel truth. I can. I want to thank them. I want to thank all those old saints of God that didn't water this down. I want to thank the ones that told me when I got saved, they told me you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need to keep right on praying until you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I say thank you. I say thank you for letting me taste to that. I'm thankful for somebody that held the bloodstained banner up and when everybody said no, 
told and everybody rejected and everybody told them to get out of their face. They just kept right on. I'm thankful for the persistence of some people who won't take no for an answer. Yeah, they may get on your nerves, but they'll get you saved if you'll listen to them while they're offering you something. You say, you all are, you go too far with it. Really? Everybody in this, I mean, everybody that's got anything, they will push that and nobody thinks they're a fanatic. They get a ball game, a, a basketball, and you have people, walk, they, they lose their mind over it. They go to every game in the country, watch every game, take their kids to every game. Nobody ever calls them a fanatic. Nobody ever calls the ones out there chasing after the world a fanatic. What about us? I'm thankful because about, just like, just like a drug addict, about 14 years ago, I got hooked on this. The moment I tasted that, the moment that I could feel what I felt, and I could go home at night, and I could lay down, and there was love where there was no love before, and there was peace where there was no peace before, and there was joy where I never know what joy was. At that point, I thought, whatever that is, I want more of that. I may just be in the ankle deep water right now, but I want to get in some swimming water. I want more of him. Amen. I know we got to get out of the way. And I'm going to stay in your feet if you will. Listen, we're having church right here. We're having church. We're going to give an altar call. This is an altar the same as an altar would be at that Lake Fork Church. You may be sitting there and thinking, man, I need, I need something. I'm looking for something. I don't believe you. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't believe you're here by happenstance. I don't think you just randomly walked up here on a Sargon Festival weekend. You may have had no intentions whatsoever, but I'm telling you, there is something that's good here. There's something that's worth going after. There's something that you can have. And I'll ask you right now, if you will, please. I, I, listen, now this, we're going to get this altar call. Would there be somebody out there that would raise their hand? I'm not going to ask you to bow your head because I couldn't make, I can't make everybody else do it. But I'm asking you, would there be somebody out there that would say, I would like to taste what you're talking about. I would like to taste of him and see how good this really is. Just, just raise your hand. We'll pray for you. We'll ask the Lord to help you to give you strength. I know there's somebody that God's dealing with. He wants to give you something good. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that all those years ago he began to deal with me. I'm thankful to have tasted this. But I'm trying to, they said evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread at. All I am is somebody that's just a mouthpiece to say, hey, I tasted this. It wasn't my good works. The Bible said you are saved by grace through faith that not of yourself. It's a gift of God, not of works. As any man should boast. It's not how good we are, why, why we are what we are. It's because when we rejected and we rejected and we rejected, but he, yet, he kept coming by and he kept knocking on our heart. And one day we tasted this and we found out that was the answer for every problem. There's anybody that's out there under those tents, anybody that can hear me today. I'm telling you that if you're looking for something, the world don't have it for you. The things of this world do not, does not have what you're looking for. Jesus Christ has it. You say, I don't want to go to a Pentecostal church. Fine, go to a Baptist church. Walk over here to the Methodist church. Go somewhere. Just taste of Him and see if it's not good. Taste of Him. And after you taste Him, I promise you, you'll want more and more. There will be a hunger and a desire for more of the things of God. While they sing tonight or today, you preaching at night while, while they're singing today. We're going to give an altar call. And I, I, I mean that. You say, I couldn't do that. It's what he said. He said, I couldn't. I couldn't do what you're saying. I couldn't eat them in a boat. After he got done, he said, you know what? I'll eat them, in, I'll eat them in a, with a goat or a boat or a fox or anything else. I just want what you're talking about. We're going to give an altar call. We are giving an altar call. Come on. Come on, everybody will. Let's, let's just gather right around. Brother Johnny said that while ago. Let's just gather right around. For the next 15 minutes, let's have church. For the next 15 minutes, let's come up and let listen. Try to get somebody by hand. Tell them to come. Let, let's have church today. Somebody will get saved. Somebody is sitting there today. That heart is about to beat out of their chest. They know they need something. They're looking for something. You come to church, you come to this service today looking for something. Well, you can find it. The Bible says if you feel after Him, you'll be found of Him. If you'll, if you'll seek after Him, you can have it. Come on, let's gather right around today. This altar is open. I'll pray with you as long as you want to pray. We'll, we come to that church. Come on, altar's open.